The next one is uh, the Sorrow Tick. SCP-1655. Item. Oh, sorry. I, 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 I didn't mean to get you off. Okay. All right. Item SCP-1655. Object Class Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-1655 is to be kept in a 5 by 5 by 5 centimeter plexiglass container. Any handling of SCP-1655 that requires opening its container is to be performed by D-Class personnel only. Description. SCP-1655 is a small arachnid of the order Isiodida. Bearing a strong resemblance to the common tick. SP1655 does not appear to share the same, uh, share the common development cycle of non anomalous members of the order Isiodida, nor to require any physical substance. Sustenance. SP1655 was found latched to the neck of Redacted, a patient in the Redacted Asylum, for the criminally insane. Oh no. They're gonna do some. I hope they don't do ableist shit. <laughs> we'll find out. Yeah. By Dr. Redacted. Dr. Redacted, employed by the Foundation, contacted his superiors as a result of the series of interviews with Redacted. The specimen is extremely aggressive and will attempt to latch onto and bite any mammal with which it comes into contact. If the specimen is able to bite someone, the following phenomena will occur. 1. Any living being with affected subject held any degree of affection or will immediately lose all memory of the subject's existence and will be unable to require any new memories concerning him, her, or it. 2. Said beings will not be able to sense the subject in any manner. Any physical contact with the subject will cause mild discomfort and disgust, which will increase in intensity the longer contact is held. 3. If the subject begins to feel affection to any other living being, they will also be affected. It appears SB-1655 is able to extract information from its victims and alter its effects in order to maintain complete emotional isolation. 4. The subject will ignore SB-1655's existence. These effects appear to be permanent and will endure even if the parasite is removed. Beings the subject bears no affection are to no affection to are unaffected. Because of this, the, and the efforts of the suffering of its victims on SB 1655, it's hypothesized the parasite keeps a mental link with its victims and feeds on the negative emotions, the effects of its bites incurred in them. Test log SB 1655. Subject, a female horse, a uh, female, not female horse cat, a female house cat and its kitten. Test. SC-1655 introduced to kitten. Result. Mother cat no longer acknowledges the kitten's ex existence. Kit kitten's attempts to feed are met with resistance from mother until eventual starvation of the kitchen. Uh, kitten. A plasma-like substance appears in SC-1655's blood sac. Subject. D-236. Test. SCP-1655 introduced to D-236. These acts of contact his grandmother, Miss Redacted, who raised him. Result. Miss Redacted does not appear to hear D-236's voice when questioned about her grandson by Agent Redacted. She shows no recollection of him. When a meeting is arranged, she ignores his, his existence entirely, and when D-236 is asked to touch her, she expresses a feeling of uneasiness, something spooky, in her words. D-236 is removed from the meeting due to signs of extreme emotional distress. SCP-1655 appears engorged, as if filled with blood. Addendum 1655-A. A diary was found next to the body of Redacted after his... auto death. The following extract of its particular note. All alone. Always alone. She couldn't see me, no matter what I did. She couldn't care. I gave up everything for her. I left my wife and kids, my job, my entire life, just to run away with her. I thought we were happy. 
And one day I come back home and all my stuff is all my stuff in out on the pavement. And when I go inside, she acts like I don't even exist. I shout at her and shake her, but nothing works. She just walks around me like I'm not there. I scream at her for hours, hours, and she just ignores me. Every time I touch her, she gets that fucking disgusting look on her face, like I'm some scum. So I took it off forever. That backstabbing, lying cunt. She had it coming. She got what she, de she deserved. Why does she love me anymore? Addendum 1655-B. Tests of the specimen's saliva have produced results. Though tests were unable to identify all of, all of the different components, trace evidence of hormones affecting the hippocampus, as well as powerful depressants, were found. My sociological examinations proved incapable of confirming how the specimen uses the information it receives from the hippocampus to affect others. It is now clear it is actively causing mental anguish to its subjects, most likely in order to hasten its feeding process. Addendum 1655-C. Closer examination of the specimen found feminine reproductive organs, implying additional members of its species may exist in the wild. Further investigation is recommended. And that's it. All right. Simple as the dark. Yeah. Alright. And there is the thumbnail. Okay, that is a <laughs> I think we can clearly say it's clickbait. I wonder how they can fuck this up. <laughs> yeah. That's true, but I mean, already we're kind of seeing it looks like they're flesh eaters instead of, you know. If, if, if thumbnail itself. Because so far, I think it only it was only showing like one vex person. Not all of this. <laughs> right? It the person's mental state, but nothing else. So why are they coming out of the ears, the eyes, the mouth? And why is the brain cut open? Yeah. I think we can clearly say it's a four for clickbait. Yeah. Four. All right. Now let's see. Did they include the copyright? Uh, Creative Commons? They did. Looks like they were doing one thing the rubber hasn't done. Yeah. Yeah. Are we ready to see it? Okay. Just last night, I finished dinner and had just done the dishes when I heard something. Faint. Almost like a whisper. I followed the sound through the living room, up the stairs. It led me to a room I don't use. I saw a light shining from under the door. But there's no way I left the lights on in that room. Hell, I haven't been in that room for months. When I opened the door, nobody was there. But a small, ornamented music box was playing in the middle of the room. No sound. Just clicking away at the end of its record. Now tell me, Doc, <laughs> does that sound right to you? I don't believe in spirits or goats or any of that. But if they don't exist, then what does that say about me? I'm losing my mind, Doc. It won't go away. It won't go away. Why? What's going on with me? Am I losing my mind? He couldn't shake it. That feeling. Yeah. That emotion. It's on the tip of your tongue, but just out of reach. He couldn't quite grasp it, but he knew something was wrong. And had been for a while now. He had to figure it out. Just had to. Or he feared the worst. He would lose his mind. He had been coming to see Dr. Kloss for six months now. He was a psychiatrist, or a psychologist. He didn't know the difference, and he didn't care. Truth be told, he couldn't even remember why he had started coming in the first place. None of that mattered now. He needed his help with only one thing, saving his mind. 
Today I bring you SCP-1655, the Sorrow Tick. Don't forget to subscribe. Before Dr. Kloss could even ask him what was wrong, he began to babble, nervously, and at times incoherently. He had small bite marks all over his body. They you wouldn't notice! It's not the one who's bitten who gets. It's the one... <laughs> it's the people, the person who's bitten loves that forgets them. Yeah. And it doesn't leave any marks. Yeah, it's a tick. Ticks don't give that big ass bite mark. Anyways, if it is a bite mark, it'll be so insanely small. Technically speaking, ticks only bite one spot and remain in that spot. Yeah. So even if you found a bite mark, you would find a tick. <laughs> My god. They started a few months ago. At first, he had assumed it was some sort of infestation. He washed everything in hot water and put his linen into the freezer to kill off any remaining bugs. When that didn't work, he called in an exterminator. After four visits, they refused to return. They told him there was absolutely no bugs or infestation left in his house. Anthony yelled at them and demanded to know where these bites on his body were coming from. The two men gave each other a quizzical look, turned around, and left. Surely, this is a matter for a medical doctor, Dr. Kloss insisted. No. No, there's more. And it gets stranger. Things were... moving. At night, in the corner of his eye, the TV flickering to life in another room, the faint sound of a child laughing upstairs. Does that sound like I need a medical doctor? Dr. Kloss tried his best to calm him down. Are you taking the medication I prescribed to you? Anthony nodded vaguely with his head down. Make sure you continue taking them. It's important. Well, they seem to be working anyway. Working? Working? I feel more nuts now than when I first came to you, Doc. If this is working, I don't want to know what it's like if it wasn't working. Calm down, Anthony. Sometimes when things seem to not be working, they're actually working exactly how they're supposed to. Trust me, it'll all come together soon. For now, just continue taking your meds and keep me updated on your progress, okay? Yeah, sure, Doc. Whatever you say. Over the next few days, it got worse. Here's one thing. Therapists can't give you, or psychologists or whatever, can't give you medication right off the bat. You have to go to a pharmacy. You have to go to a pharmacy for that shit. As far as I'm aware, am I correct? There is a profession where they can prescribe you medication, but they don't hand it to you. Right. <laughs> it made it look less like a med mental professional and more like a drug dealer. <laughs> Anyways. ...in different places and he had used them. The bed sheets rolled up when he had surely left them in a pile. Pillows on the floor. He began to question his sanity. He screamed at the walls and floor to stop. Whoever or whatever was doing this, it just has to stop. The voices and muffled crying came from all corners of his house. And what was this now? Could it be? Did he hear a woman screaming? It was all just too much to handle. He couldn't take it anymore. He had reached his breaking point. Either he was going insane, or the house was haunted. He yelled at the top of his lungs, tore at his clothing, and started beating the walls until his fists ran bloody. The police showed up at 10.32 p.m. due to a neighbor's call about screams and odd sounds from a nearby house. They found Anthony bleeding from a self-inflicted head wound, but still just barely conscious. He was immediately rushed to the hospital for treatment. All the while, he kept laughing and saying, If I hit my head hard enough, violence? the voice was... Huh? How did they find a way to add violence? I don't know. <laughs> ...will stop. One visitor per day. It was all that was allowed. 
The high security insane asylum wing was reserved for people who were physically abusive to themselves or anyone else. Dr. Kloss looked through the one-way mirror, nodding his head with a wry smile. From his pocket, he pulled out a small pill container, the same pill container that he prescribed to Anthony. Only this one was labeled SCP-1655 Extract. Extreme Caution. He walked into the room and patted Anthony on the back. You've done very well, Anthony. You've been a very good boy. The Foundation appreciates your assistance in this matter. Anthony sat in the corner, rocking back and forth. They replaced the D-Class with this and changed the entire story with the D-Class? I don't feel like we can change it because it's so vastly different than the story involving the D-Class, honestly. Yeah. So no, they didn't. They removed one story and added another instead. Yeah. Heard any of the other stuff. yeah. Hardly acknowledging the presence of the doctor, Coloss came closer and leaned into Anthony's ear. Don't worry about anything. We'll take good care of you. And of your wife. And your daughter. Anthony twitched and he turned back to Dr. Coloss. I don't have a wife. Or, or a daughter. Dr. Coloss reached into his pocket and pulled out the pill container and a small, empty Perspex box. Oh, that's right. Silly me. Of course you don't. He chuckled to himself as he reached behind Anthony's ear and picked something off the back of his neck. He popped it into the Perspex box with a chuckle as he walked away. It appeared to be a tick. SCP-1655 is a small arachnid of the order Exodida, bearing a strong resemblance to the common tick. SCP-1655 does not appear to share the common development cycle of non-anomalous members of the Order Exodida, nor to require any physical sustenance. The specimen is extremely aggressive, and will attempt to latch onto and bite any mammal with which it comes into contact. If the specimen is able to bite someone, the following phenomena will occur. 1. Any living being the affected subject held any degree of affection for will immediately lose all memory of the subject's existence and will be unable to acquire any new memories concerning him, her, or it. Said beings will not be able to sense the subject in any manner. Any physical contact with the subject will what cause mild discomfort and, and disgust, which will link- Right. ...the longer contact is held. If the subject begins to feel affection to any other living being, they will also be affected. It appears SCP-1655 is able to extract information from its victims and alter its effects in order to maintain complete emotional isolation. The subject will ignore SCP-1655's existence. These effects appear to be permanent and will endure even if the parasite is removed. Is Being the subject bears... Was that? Did they add one punch, man? Probably. No affection to are unaffected. Because of this, and the effects of the suffering of its victims on <laughs> SCP-1655, it is hypothesized the parasite has at least one stolen character. Maybe. The parasite keeps a mental link with its victims and feeds on the negative emotions the effects of its bites incurred on them. That's all we have for you. <gasps> whoa, whoa, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> Do you not see the thumb thumbnail for this other SCP right oh. here? <laughs> well then, that was the bait right there. But anyways, removal of characters and license. They did remove characters. They removed literally every character. Yeah. So, although they didn't remove the license, it has to be a because they replaced the D class with a different character altogether. I don't count that as the D class's story because it's so different. So, you, do you say three or four? Because this word cut you off. Three because right. Would be a four, but they they kept the license. Yeah, added gore or violence. 
four. <laughs> yes, they very much did. The only one of them they didn't add much violence. <laughs> From the plot of the article, four. Oh, yeah. Somehow. <laughs> Only men in the video. The, well, four. yeah, four. four but... They removed all the female characters. The mother cat was gone. The grandmother was gone. Sure, they added two females, but they were not originally. That doesn't count. Oh, my God. This is the worst one, Jerry. Five percent. You know the worst thing about this? Yeah. This was the easiest article to get right out of all of them so far. Yeah, and it's five percent. Jesus Christ. You know what? At least they got the license right. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing they got correct. Right. Right. <laughs> Jesus, but to get like five percent. They removed every female character, and let's be honest, every single character in the article. Mm -hmm. But you know what? At least they they did the license. Yeah. Anyway, the next SCP is $585.98, aka 